How are we doing, folks? Your host, Moose, here on the Pit Panthers Football Network as we welcome you to the Season 3, Week 13, Hashtag Panther Nation, around the NCAA Recap Show. Your Panthers coming off the backs of a big victory at home on Senior Night over the North Carolina Tar Heels. They put up 52 points and beat the Tar Heels 52-31, setting up a huge showdown next week for the right to go to the ACC championship game. And it was really a tale of a couple of quarters for the Panthers. The second quarter, they exploded for 24 points. They put up 21 more as they kind of traded touchdowns with North Carolina in the third quarter, as well as the fourth quarter. It was really just back and forth, back and forth. But that explosion in the second quarter put the Panthers far and away ahead, and they were able to hold off North Carolina. It was really amazing how converse or opposite the two teams were. The Panthers leaned on their rushing attack 327 yards. North Carolina leaned on their passing attack 443 yards. I think that partially owed to the fact that the Panthers did take that early lead, uh, as well as North Carolina. They're just a passing-oriented team. That's what they did last year to Pitt, and if they're going to win games, their passing attack is going to beat you. Thankfully for the Panthers, even though they did give up a ton of yards, they made two turnovers when they had to, two interceptions when they needed to. They turned one of them into a touchdown. It was just a great game overall. Kenny Pickett is really developing into a great quarterback. He didn't have to do a lot in this game. Game, but he was 11 to 14, 141 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. Quadri Olson and Darren Hall, what a combination they've turned out to be. Three touchdowns between them running the ball over 300 yards. Olson had a touchdown receiving as well. He had a, they had a almost identical yardage totals. Hall had, I believe, 163 yards because he lost four receiving. Olson had 167 yards. Uh, 22 receiving, 145 rushing, three touchdowns. Darren Hall had one touchdown. It was just a great game overall. Dennis Briggs had a really great game as well. 11 tackles for the senior, redshirt senior from Pittsburgh. Strong safety. Had a tackle for the loss. Had an interception as well and a nice return on that interception. Uh, excuse me, not a nice return. He basically didn't gain any yards on it. But just overall, a really big game for him. And the Panthers, you know, for what they could do, they needed maybe a little bit more pressure on the quarterback. They did have three sacks, but it still felt like for all the times Elliott dropped back, except for the times he got sacked, he wasn't really hurried too often. But a good, competent performance by the Panthers, one that they needed. And the offense is just, it's one of those things where they're almost unstoppable at times running the football they're just they're putting up five six yards at a clip and doing a great job and that's going to be a real key for the Panthers you know obviously they have this year to finish out and that's what we're going to focus on but next year losing both of their star running backs losing three starters on the offensive line the entire right side of the line is going to be devastating next year to see how the team will develop and deal with that loss breaking in a ton of new starters in a area where they've been so dominant and they, they've leaned on so heavily you have to think the development of Kenny Pickett which has been very very good uh, over the back half of this season of course a big game against Georgia Tech big huge game against Duke six touchdown performance and then a very solid game here against North Carolina you got to think his continued development and even his ability this coming week for the Panthers will be a real key to how far they can go not only this year but in the years to come in the future around the ACC of course the Panthers won the other game to take a look at is Miami won meaning the Panthers will take on the Miami Hurricanes this coming week to vie for the ACC Coastal Division title and to make the ACC Championship game. They'll be playing Louisville, interestingly enough. Louisville, with Florida State winning, Clemson winning, and Louisville winning, they all tie at the top of the ACC Atlantic crown at 6-2. and two. And Louisville's actually going to win the tiebreaker. So Clemson, your two-time defending national champion, will more than likely not be able to defend their title. Because even if they win their last game against South Carolina, they'll finish the season 10-2. and And that will not be enough for them to make the ACC title game. And more than likely not enough for them to make... Uh, the NCAA, the college football playoff. Um, Alabama wins, Middle Tennessee stays. We take a look around the country. The one loss group of five teams keep winning. Middle Tennessee and Arkansas State and Houston all posting fairly impressive victories. They're all going to have one loss, so it's really going to be a battle to see who can get into the uh, New Year's Six 
bowl games. Huge game there. Penn State losing to Michigan State. They just beat Ohio State last week. They now lose to Michigan State. They've lost to both the Michigan teams, and all of a sudden, Ohio State, who looked to be out of the national championship picture, is right back in the thick of things with the ability to win the Big Ten title because of the fact that they will, as long as they beat Michigan next week, make it into the Big Ten Championship game. Another big game, LSU just escapes Auburn to stay unbeaten and effectively clinches the SEC West Division title. And you'll probably expect to see them in the college football play if I'd expect them to win out. Oklahoma with a huge victory to stay unbeaten, 56-44, unbelievable victory over TCU. Uh, Oregon State knocks off Colorado, who I think has lost three in a row now. Real rough stretch for the Buffs. Tennessee, 21-3 over Vanderbilt. They inch close closer and closer to the SEC East title uh, and maybe an outside shot at the college football playoff and Washington fends off upset alert to stay unbeaten in the Pac-12. Kyler Murray, like we mentioned, player of the week, seven total touchdowns, 414 yards uh, passing, 111 yards rushing. I think it was five passing touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns for, uh, he's listed as a senior. I think in real life he was a junior. It's messed up. Either way, his final season with Oklahoma could lead them to a national title berth potentially. Matt Matthew Wilkins for UCF wins uh, off a, a defensive player of the week. In the ACC, though, this is a matchup that we will see next week and a huge one to focus on. Evan Sheriffs, who's taken over as the starting quarterback for Miami with Malik Rozier being out for the season with an injury. Five total touchdowns for him in Miami's victory. Dennis Briggs, like we've already mentioned, 11 tackles, one for a loss, and a pick for the Panthers. He's going to look to try and shut down Sheriffs if the Panthers hope to clinch the ACC Coastal Division title. Darius Geis, big game in the victory over Auburn, 130 39 yards and a touchdown uh, as he stays atop the Heisman poll. Deshaun Kaiser, three total touchdowns in a victory over Wake Forest, stays at two. No movement there. Joe Burrow at three. Five touchdown passing performance in the win over Indiana, so big game for him. Lamar Jackson, three touchdowns passing and 90 yards rushing in a solid game for him as Louisville wins, and he has a shot you never know at the Heisman as well with two games still to play. And Hayden Moore for Cincinnati with another big game and five total touchdowns for the group of five leader. In the coaches poll, four unbeatens right now, LSU, Washington, UCLA, Oklahoma. That would be your playoff if it were to happen right now, but Washington and UCLA, one of them is going to have to lose in the Pac-12 title game. And so things could be shaken up. Oklahoma still got two games to play. LSU has to get through the SEC title game. Pitt or Ohio State has to try and win the Big Ten or the ACC championship game. You've got Clemson, Notre Dame, Alabama, Tennessee can win the SEC title still. They're all waiting in the wings for their shot if possible. So you can take a look at the top 25. Texas lost to Oklahoma State, so they are one of the biggest teams to drop in the polls this week. Oklahoma State actually comes into the polls. They weren't even ranked. But now they jump in at number 19 in the coaches poll. Auburn falls back to number 20 with their loss to LSU. Penn State back to 22 with their loss to Michigan State as Michigan State jumps into the polls at number 25. So a lot of movement there. NC State, Colorado, and Florida all drop out. But you can see they are still receiving some votes at this moment in time. Miami is about number 28 in the country right now before facing the Panthers this week. BCS rankings, if they were still a thing, would have LSU, Washington, UCLA, Oklahoma, and Georgia as the top five. Pitt currently sitting at number eight, your Pitt Panthers, but they got a lot to say still. Big game at Miami is a tough matchup, of course, as always. And then if they were to win that game, they'd have the ACC championship as well, which would be against a very hot Louisville squad uh, that's won a few big games very recently, and they have a chance to go to 9-3 and three if they can win at Wisconsin this week. Now, if you want, take a look at where your favorite team's projected to go bowling this offseason. As we take a look, we'll go through every bowl right now. Uh, some big matchups if you want to take a look at them. NC State Vanderbilt in the Belk Bowl. UCF Georgia Tech in the AdvoCare V100 Bowl will be a big game. Uh, Iowa West Virginia at the Mikey Car Care Bowl. Alamo Bowls, Texas and Stanford. That'd be a fun one. Tennessee and Penn State in the Outback Bowl. Michigan and Bama in the 
Capital One Bowl. Pitt is currently projected for the Orange Bowl against Arkansas State, the top-ranked group of five at this moment in time, at least via the BCS rankings. That's why they're projected that way. We'll see if the college football playoff sees things the same way. National championship would be Washington, LSU, but UCLA and Oklahoma would be in the mix as well. Georgia, Notre Dame, Pitt, Clemson, Ohio State, all those teams trying to throw their names in the hat for the college football playoff this season. Big games in the ACC this week, though, to look forward to, and big games around the nation. Pitt-Miami is easily the biggest. Uh, Georgia Tech has a chance to play spoiler on Georgia's season and any outside chance they may have uh, at the college football playoff. Florida State-Florida, always a huge rivalry game. Clemson-South Carolina is a big one. North Carolina-Duke. And then a huge out-of-conference game very late in the season. Louisville heading up to the cold of Wisconsin. Late November should be a tough game for the Cardinal. Middle Tennessee State has arguably their toughest test of the season taking on Marshall. We are Marshall uh, to see if they can go to 11-1 and, and set up uh, potentially a, a New Year's Six game for them. Michigan, Ohio State. Ohio State has to win if they want to make the Big 12 title game. If Michigan wins, they'll actually make the Big 12 title, or Big 10, excuse me, title game because they would have two losses, but they'd have the tiebreakers over Ohio State and Penn State who would also each have two losses. So basically they're playing for a berth in the Big 10 title game. UL Lafayette uh, against Arkansas State looking to knock them off. This is a huge game just because of the discrepancy between the teams. 0-11 USC trying to prevent their first ever winless season and trying to knock off undefeated UCLA. That should be a big one. Bama versus Auburn. The Iron Bowl, always a big matchup. Bama looking to get to 10 wins. Auburn trying to get to 9-3 and three and the victory over their rivals. Notre Dame, if they win, they'll keep their name right in the thick of it for the college football playoff. They've got to knock off Stanford at the farm, though. It's going to be a very tough matchup for Deshaun Kaiser, Brian Kelly, and company. Kansas State, Texas, big, big 12 game. Uh, the Wildcats and the Longhorns trying to potentially even somehow get to a Big Ten, uh, Big 12 title. And then, of course, the piece de resistance in the ACC, Pitt versus Miami. You take a look at the ACC conference standings, and the winner is either going to be 6-2 and two or 7-1. and one. If Miami wins, they and Pitt will be 6-2, and two, but they'll take the tiebreaker. If Pitt wins, they're going to win the conference outright by two games. And here's the interesting thing. Like I mentioned, Clemson, Florida State, and Louisville are tied. Clemson showing is the top team, but Louisville, I've figured it out uh, somehow. I don't really know what the tiebreaker is because Clemson has the best division record. But when you get to the conference championship week, Louisville is going to be in the conference championship game. So they've got the tiebreaker there. Somehow I'll have to try and figure out. Maybe it's points scored. I'm not really sure. But either way, Pitt or Miami will be taking on Louisville uh, in the ACC title game. Herb Street likes the Panthers away at the Hurricanes. But Miami's got so much talent that really defies their record. They're 7-4, and four, but they have a better points per game than the Panthers. They have a better total offense than the Panthers. They're pass offense is fantastic and we know Pitt's pass defense has struggled of late their total defense in terms of yardage has been better they have a very good rush defense ninth in the country and they have the number two turnover differential in the nation so if you actually look at Miami legitimately in terms of like the game preview Miami is fantastic. They're a really good team. They've got a couple tough losses. They lost to Nebraska, of course. Big win over Toledo and FCS squad. They beat Clemson, which is a huge victory on their resume. And it's keeping Clemson out of potential national championship game. But then they lost to Virginia Tech in a tight game. They lost at BYU in a very tight game. So they've been very hit and miss, very up and down. They blew out North Carolina in that meantime. Blew out Boston College. They obliterated Duke. And then they lost to Georgia Tech before blowing out Virginia. So it seems like if they win, it's a very big win. If they lose, it's a tight affair. And so it'll be very interesting to see what's going to happen in this matchup, especially with Evan Shrivs at quarterback. He's been unbelievable. He's been unflappable this season, but he wasn't even supposed to be the starter. The redshirt junior was backing up uh, Malik Rozier. He got hurt in basically the first game of the season. And so Sharifs has come in. He's got 28 touchdowns to five interceptions. An unbelievable season for him. Uh, they got Walton, who's been a very good runner, 85 yards game. Amon Richards, we know, very talented. And then they have tons of defensive ability, especially in their front seven. So it's going to be tough for the Panthers. Darren Hall and Quadri Olison, the Panthers running backs, are going to have their work cut out for them. Kenny Pickett, we know, has been very good of late. 16 touchdowns to eight interceptions. Uh, he's been fantastic this season. I think he's got something like 
eight touchdowns, two interceptions the last three games. So he's been very, very good. The Panthers will hope to keep that up. They will be missing some big names on the defensive side of the ball, though. Sean Idowu with an abdominal tear that he picked up in the victory over North Carolina. He's going to be out four weeks, so at least for this game and the ACC championship game, if the Panthers make it. Paris Ford, two weeks still to go. He may be back for the ACC championship game if the Panthers can win out, but they'll be missing their star free safety and Jazzy Stock will have to fill in for him. For the Hurricanes, Malik Rozier, they already knew he'd be out with a broken arm that's going to cause him to miss the whole season. And they're also going to be missing their starting center, Todd Harris. Redshirt freshman, actually, is going to be out with a torn tricep. And they'll have a true freshman starting at center, which could be a big thing to take advantage of for the Panthers, especially Amir Watts and Keyshawn Camp. Very, very good defensive tackles. But if you look at Miami's lineup... They have 90s all over the field. It's unbelievable. They have three defensive tackles at 93 or better. That is going to be an assignment and a half for Alex Bookser, Connor Dentino, and the youngster, sophomore Cameron Porter in the Panthers' offensive line. But overall, Miami's unbelievable. Their talent level, and they have a 92 overall defensive tackle as well, Moten. I mean, so they're just fantastic. Rozier was a 91 as a starting quarterback. Sharif's is a 90, so it's not exactly a big drop-off when you move to his level. They got a ton of talent. They have really good receivers. I think three, maybe four receivers. Or actually, I think it's five receivers they have of 90 overall or better. So they can air it out. There's no doubt about that. And with the way the Panthers uh, lineup has been lately, they're going to have to look back at the tape and see a way to neutralize this Miami passing attack. We see what Rozier's done, how good he's been. Or excuse me, what Sharif's has done this year. Not Rozier. 250 yards a game, 58% completion percentage. Only five picks, so the Panthers, if they're hoping for interceptions, it's not very likely with the way he's played. And they even have a great backup. Jack Allison, the third stringer, 87 overall. Fantastic player. Mark Walton, of course, 94 overall running back. 852 yards on the year. And they got Trey, uh, Trayon Gray, and Travis Homer behind him as well. So they got some fantastic players. Homer's in line to be the starter next year. He's a fantastic player and should do very well for him. And like I said, five receivers of 90 overall or better, led by the All-American Amon Richards. Unbelievable player. He's only a junior, so he could even be back next year potentially. 95 speed on both those receivers is going to be a lot for the likes of DeMar Hamlin and Dane Jackson to have to keep up with all day. And it doesn't even get easier on the tight end battle. Michael Irvin Jr., 86 overall fantastic player. Miami's line, I think every starter is 87 or better with the exception of their center they're going to have to play is Maddox. 62 overall, true freshman from Maryland, is going to have a lot on his plate with those Panthers defensive tackles. The line, you'd anticipate the Panthers will bring a little bit more pressure uh, knowing that to try and overwhelm the line so that they can't just double team the Panthers two uh, defensive tackles and try and leave them uh, you know, exposed on the ends. Uh, Jackson, really good defensive end. They got a 90 overall uh, as well. Defensive tackle. The, the amount of talent Miami has on this defensive front four is just disgusting. And it's going to be something the Panthers will really have to deal with if they want to get their rushing attack going. We saw how tough it was for Pitt in the games where they couldn't really move the ball on the ground. Georgia Tech immediately comes to mind. The Panthers only put up 17 points. Kenny Pickett did throw for 260 yards, um, but the Panthers did not put a ton of points in the end zone. You have to think if it's a game like that where the rushing attack can't go get going, the Panthers are not going to have uh, the ability to to air it out and keep up with this Miami offensive attack that's been so prolific this year. They still got Sean Redwine, cornerback. They got uh, Shaq Quarterman, unbelievable middle linebacker leading this team. They're just so, so good all over the field. Jaquan Johnson, All-American strong safety. I mean, this Miami team is just stellar. The It's going to be a tough matchup for the Panthers. It's away from home. Miami knows they're playing with a chance to win the ACC Coastal, so they're going to have you know, a real chip on their shoulder to try and win and get to a, a BCS Bowl, or excuse me, a New Year's Six Bowl if they can do so. So it's going to be very tough for the Panthers. It's a huge ask. They have the talent level surely to do it, but can they play their best game of the season at the time when they need it the most? So as always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know who's going to win the Pitt Miami game. What's the score going to be? How are things going to turn out? Will we see your Panthers in the ACC championship game? As always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you soon. 
Hail to Pit. Take care. Bye-bye.